What's up guys? I'll be playing Room Detective, exploring the personal and distinctive details in each individual dorm room of Class 1A that illustrates the visible reflection of their identity. The things we find in our rooms and the subtlety of these little details we deduce from those findings in some measure describes who we are. Unfortunately, we weren't able to catch Bakugo and Suyu's room in the Class 1A room presentation competition. And also, this kid. I wonder what NSFW stuff is in his room. <laughs> Izuku's a weeb with a collection of All Might collectibles. He has always idolized All Might since like forever. He's the reason why he wanted to be a hero, and he's the reason why he is a hero. He's a weeb that's been noticed by his senpai and has grown to become a weeby hero that has inspired many others. Tokoyami. <laughs> The dark gritty edge bird has fully embraced the brooding darkness that resides in himself. The inner turmoil with housing and regulating dark shadow is why he chooses to live within the blackness, because he himself is a creature of the dark. Yet, he's embarrassed of his warlock lair. <laughs> and annoyed with his classmates ruffling his feathers about the ominous atmosphere and not understanding the fantastical dramatics and collection. A sword? So it's not a phase, it's who he is. And we love him for that. Aoyama, the complete contrast to the edge bird. The flamboyant knight in shining armor showers himself in excessively sparkly luminescent light. Aoyama has to be the center of attention, doing Aoyama things, dwelling under the spotlights, posing in front of mirrors, dazzling in his overly dazzling room. It's a testament to how much he loves his reflection. Ajiro. Uh, I guess it's what one would expect when entering a standard dorm room if it wasn't occupied by someone. Uh, nothing in the room discerns Ojiro from anyone else. There's no descriptions of his interests, hobbies, or anything that define his characteristics. Aww, poor Ojiro. Look how his tail drops after every comment. Ojiro is clearly insecure about being so normal. It's just another normal room. Like how he's always just there. Probably struggling with a lack of a profound sense of self-identity. He's usually thought of as a hard worker that's nice to be around. Although he's not one to conform, he does have very strong feelings about wanting to earn things with his own abilities. And it's not like he isn't passionate about anything. He likes martial arts. Smile. Ida's room is one that we would expect from a scholar-like class president. Possessing an organized mini library that offers him a vast wealth of knowledge, accentuating his studious nature and an inventory of identical glasses for precautionary measures, exemplifying his shrewdness by keen insight and awareness of the hero training and real-world heroing. Now one might burst in love over being too prepared, but I wouldn't expect anything less from the class president. Kaminari has the most accurate representation of a high schooler's bedroom. A myriad of his interests, or things he thinks are cool, are thrown together in a jumbled collection with no singular theme, other than maybe to adhere to the latest trends to make himself look cool in front of others. But he miserably fails at it. <laughs> Koda. What a lucky lad. He has his own bed, litter box, food station, a table, toys, pictures of his human, and the waifus. Kirishima's living space of masculinity <laughs> is itself divisive among the masses that have never awakened their inner fighting spirit, most likely face palming and making derisive comments about how Kirishima might be overcompensating for his insecurity, or is overly too engrossed with pushing this manliness motto. <laughs> But the ones that have experienced raw physical hand-to-hand -hand combat will think it's cool. <laughs> Shoji has a minimalist lifestyle living better with less. <laughs> he just bears the fundamental necessities, a place to sleep and a place to work. Sero apparently indulges in Southeast Asian and Indian culture. His suave laid-back nature, hammock, and scenic Asian interior design prompts this feeling of relaxation and or exploration. Ooh, 
Todoroki has been raised in a traditional Japanese house all his life and simply couldn't get comfortable without living in a place that's unlike home in spite of everything that happened in that house. One would think that he wouldn't want to remind himself of that place, but he worked hard to make his dorm room feel like home. <laughs> Sato has his own version of the conventional microwave, a toaster oven. Since baking sweets is a hobby of his, a confectioner as one might say, and conveniently, he has sweets prepared for the grills. <coughs> hmm, pretty suspicious don't you think? Bono, bono. Well this is the most action and attention this guy is going to get. Jiro is clearly an avid musician who likes punk rock and has taken an interest in learning and playing several instruments. <laughs> Though oddly she's embarrassed when she revealed her interest to her class. <laughs> At first it could just be her not feeling comfortable showing her room and or interest to others, which yeah it's the case, but there lies a deeper issue within herself, feeling conflicted for investing into an interest that's unrelated to heroism. Anyways, it was so cute when she was doing the sheepish fingers poke thing but with her earphone jacks. Hakagure's room is probably the closest portrayal to your typical teenage girl's room. Cute, pink and comfy with tons of plushies and fruity designs to brighten the mood and one notable thing about this nudist is her affinity for things with a surprise motif, like the gift-themed pillow and table. Wonder what other surprises she has in store for us. Mina has an eccentric taste in wild deep pink interiors with varied patterns. She likes things with personality. Mm, to be honest, it looks like an 80s porn set, but she thinks it's cute, so that's all that matters. Ochako doesn't mind having a quote-unquote dull room. Since she comes from a poor household, she naturally became frugal with her spending to save money for her parents, although she doesn't practice the minimalist lifestyle, nor is her room completely barren. She has a constellation chart, an interest she took up perhaps due to the relation of her zero-gravity quirk, a cactus for the cactus vibes, and it symbolizes great endurance and determination, tea and mochi because she's a wonderful host and they're a great and expensive snack and refreshment to serve. And the fan is probably due to her simply being accustomed to using a fan, or she wants to minimize any cost of any form, so no AC. Anyhow, she's content with living in a mundane place as long as she can help contribute to her parents living a comfortable life. Momo. Uh, first world problems for a first class teenage girl. <laughs> Having to live in a fucking closet? The nerves of UA. Just kidding. Momo's not a petty spoiled rich girl. She simply miscalculated the comparable level of luxury between the upper class and middle class, hence the deluxe lavish bed taking up most of the room space. Probably not ready to temporarily give up that comfort just yet. So which of class 1As was your favourite room and why? My favourite is Mina because, I don't know, it's very porny. Take that as you will.